to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Be careful when you ask God for favor. He may take you to the prison. He looks at a woman and says you are highly favored. You thought the next thing that will happen to that woman is a recognition by Pilate and so on and so forth for national honor. That's what happens to people who are favored. And the next thing that happens to that woman is a plethora of controversies. Beginning with her husband-to-be. From where is this pregnancy coming from? He said, let me tell you sincerely, I am innocent. I only met a spirit. A spirit? Do I look like a child? Does a child pay dowry? A spirit? God had to intervene and say, Joseph, listen, 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 listen. Don't be afraid. What is in this woman is of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. But the people that do know their God, they shall be strong. You need to interpret life from the lens of your knowledge of God. Let me tell you, there are many lamentations that are unnecessary. They are not a proof of the absence of God's might. They are just a proof of your not knowing him properly. Are we together now? When you know a man who is kind and benevolent and he tells you, come to my office, your knowledge of what he's able to do will give you the same power. Even if you are seated there after 12 hours, he'll come out and say, I'm so sorry, our attendees are no, no problem, sir. You are tired and complaining, and yet you are no problem. Look, look how people now. Please don't don't feel bad. Eh? I'm just saying this from a nice heart. Look how people queue in front of embassies right now, all across Nigeria and Africa any embassy at all even one the ones that were quiet everybody's just queuing there why and they can endure that pain because they know the potential of a visa stamped in your passport there has to be something that sponsors your staying power our weakness is proof that we do not know something about god every time god demands that you are patient there is a compensation plan at the end of it if you know this about god you will laugh and rejoice even while you are standing in the midst of storms. He says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I be afraid of? Something about God you do not know is the reason why you are crying anyhow. I know whom I have believed and I'm persuaded. I'm persuaded. I'm persuaded. Apostle, you don't know my problem. I'm in a financial crisis right now that even if I receive five years salary, it will not pay it. I just want to kill myself and take... And the same energy it takes to kill yourself is the same energy you require to lie down quietly and say, God, you created me. The Bible says, if you've been evil, know how to give good gifts. Are we together? Two people can go through the same situation. But one would take advantage of his knowledge of God and scale through it as if the devil does not exist and the other person will remain there. Do you know what it meant for the three Hebrew boys to stand in front of Nebuchadnezzar and speak harshly to him? Oh king, we are people of honor, but on this matter we are not careful. Now, the character of faith that is derived from encounters. He says, our God will deliver us. However, if it does not come, let it be known to you. And God said, this is what I'm talking about. Uh, before they arrived there, the fourth man was already there. The fourth man did not come into the fire. The fourth man was only revealed in the fire. He was always there. Lo, I am with you. 
he didn't say lo i am coming i am with you and the lord walking with them the consciousness that you are not alone if you insult me you insulted two people i may keep quiet but the other person will not keep quiet if you favor me you bless two people me and the one who backs me i may not be able to do much as a person but the benevolence of the one who backs me will surprise you that's why he says i will bless them that bless you i will bless them that bless you not them that bless him for blessing you they have also done something to me next time you come and bless your man of god and god opens up doors know that that seed it was two people that received it here men received but in the realm of the spirit someone was honored by what you did too an encounter with god my greatest secret today ladies and gentlemen let me tell you my greatest secret i submit to you is not prayer it's not fasting it's not word study as important as these things are my greatest secret today is the strength and the depth of my encounters with god this is what has given me the staying power there is something i know about god that cannot be explained in a sermon there is something i know about god that cannot be explained in a song there is something i know about god that cannot be explained by a lecture that is what sponsors the audacity and the confidence i read my bible and i believe everything i find there deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 1 and 2 when i read that about myself i believed it that it shall come to pass if i diligently hearken to the voice of the lord to do observe and to do all that he commands me this day that i will be exalted above all the nations of the earth and that these blessings will come upon me and overtake me believe me i believe it joshua 1 and verse 8 that this book of the law shall not depart from out of my mouth but that i will meditate upon it day and night and be careful to observe and to do all that is written therein that i can through that act make my way prosperous and that i will have good success i believe it genesis 17 and verse 6 i will make you exceeding fruitful he said and I will cause kings to come out of you and that nations will come out of your loins. I will not lead a mediocre people. It's a covenant through an encounter that produced that understanding. There is no man who sustains the ability to end my life before my time because I am bound by a covenant. What do you know about God that gives you the stamina? Apostle, how are you sure you will have long life? Honor your father and your mother in the Lord that it shall be well with you and that your days will be long. Number one. Number two, I said before you life and death, blessing and cursing, but I advise that you choose life. Number three, I shall not die and live to declare the works of the Lord. The question is, am I spending my life declaring the works of the Lord? These are the weapons that sustain my longevity. It's not brain work. I won't die. Many people have said that kind of thing. why do you believe you are going to prosper the bible says let them shout for joy that favor my righteous cause yeah let them say continually that the lord be glorified which had pleasure in the prosperity of his servant Zechariah 17 and verse 1, I believe, cry yet saying, thus saith the Lord, my city's true prosperity shall be spread abroad and I shall yet comfort Zion. The Bible says, ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 9, that though he was poor, yet for your sake he became rich, that you through his poverty he might be rich. Deuteronomy um, 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 8.18 Thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth power. What is the basis of your confidence in this wicked world? My uncle, I heard stories that you'll be appointed next week. Please be careful. Woe to him that puts his strength in a man. God uses men, but he does not teach us to depend on men. He uses men as tools, not sources. There is only one Lord. There is only one faith. There is only one baptism. Abba we call men Abba as a token of our communication of God's responsibility through them but let me tell you the truth there is only one man who is one God really 
source sustainer provider defender the god of heaven so you can have a big project that requires one billion five billion and all you have in your account home and abroad is ten thousand naira and someone laughs at you and says listen let me tell you if i were you i would reduce disgracing myself by writing this vision and announcing that one day that company will come to pass what do you think is the basis of the confidence of those who do exploits in the kingdom there are no guarantees in life now they looked unto him and their faces were lightened he is the basis of my confidence i truly believe him listen i want you to take this time all through this conference thank god for all your business plans and everything there is a place for that i hope that tomorrow would we'll be able to touch on that are we together but first things first every other thing derives its value from your encounter with god there is something that happens to a man when you truly meet god when you truly meet God. There are things that God told me through the encounters I had with him. They become and they even remain an anchor to my life. He told Joshua, no man will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. I said, Lord, for naming me Joshua, it meant that that scripture was for me. And I believe it. I do not believe that there is any nation that can reject the investment of God's grace upon my life. It's not pride. My apologies if I sound arrogant. It's the truth. I do not believe that I will ever lack people to rise and stand to support and defend what I represent. Because the basis of my encounter and my confidence directly with God and even through scripture is that the Lord gave the word and great was the company of them that published it. What is the basis of your confidence? Why do I believe I would do well in Abuja? Because Abuja is FCT? No. Every city has gates. And when the gates are opened, the city is open. Doesn't matter the pride of men. Focus on the gates being opened. He said, lift up your heads, O ye gates. Is that in your Bible? And be ye lifted ancient doors. That means there are people who can be in a city for 20 years, yet in the realm of the spirit, they are outside the city. Somebody will come and stay in their house and prosper in six months. And they have been there in 10 years and never have a plot of land because they are not really in the city. Just because your physical body came into the region does not mean you are there. Are we blessed? If God speaks now and says, I am about to bless 12 people to represent the 12 years of this church, I am going to pray for the remaining 11 people because one position is already taken. I am confident of the investment of God's jealousy upon my life. It is a primer. It's an activator of passion. God does not just love me. He is jealous over me. Jealousy is a deeper dimension of love. Jealousy is not bad though. It was just used by wrong men. Bible said God is a jealous God. It is jealousy that makes you protect what is yours. Without jealousy, you are not motivated to protect what is yours. If I touch your phone, you will look at it. What is taking your eyes there? Jealousy. Are we together? If you find someone come to drag your child, will you just laugh and say, that's all right, whatever you are doing with him, bring him back later. No, jealousy will make you stand. Ah. God of vengeance has won my battle for me. God of miracles has won my battle for me. I'm a winner man, a winner man. He's won my battle for me. My rewarder has won my battle for me. My restorer has won my battle for me. 
I'm a wiener man, a wiener man. Listen, this is the mystery that makes small people like us look great. It's not that our sufficiency is in ourselves. Look at me, this is all of me. Look at your pastor, this is all of him. Ah, but standing behind us is one with terrible jealousy over us. The Lord my lifter has won my battle for me. My restorer has won my battle for me. I don't know what you know him as. My wisdom has won my battle. Not my brain, no, oh, him. He's my wisdom. My lifter has won my battle for me. I'm a winner man, a winner man. Has won my battle for me. I'm a winner man, a winner man. I want you to leave this church tonight with confidence. When people look at you and say, What happened? You finally got in the job, say, No, I will not rejoice like that over a job. I found something, something greater than a job. Thank God for that blessing. But this is more than. Uh -uh. The Bible says the kingdom of God is like a man who was looking for a pearl. And when he found one, he sold everything he had to buy the whole field and remain there. Please hear me. Believe me when I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that there is nothing my God cannot do. There is nobody he cannot lift, including you. Hallelujah. The first thing God told the fallen man is who told you who told you where did you hear this from i heard your voice but i hid because i was naked he said who told you everything you believe today came from somewhere culture has a voice yesterday has a voice your past has a voice the devil has a voice demons have voices paul said there is as it um, many voices and that none of them is without signification Today, if you hear his voice, there are many voices. Some of you are about to do great things for the kingdom. And the voice of yesterday says, are you, are you aware you will be the first to do this in 120 years of your family? And you can draw back. When they met a storm, they said, let us go to the other side, Jesus said. And the Bible says a storm of wind came. The same energy it would take to go back was the same energy it took to remain and to press on. Jesus said, no, there's no going back. We will calm the storm. Please hear me. I came tonight to charge us that the believer's advantage is not just in grammar and speakings. There are ordinary men who do not have the comeliness to be desired as far as you know there's a place for mastery and all of these things we'll discuss some of these things but let me tell you first things first i don't care what you know until i see who you know because pharaoh will say who send you not what are you saying pharaoh's interest is not what you are saying pharaoh let my people go he said who sent you i want to know the who before the what thank God for information there are people who can be ever learning but never coming to the knowledge of the truth it's time for you to settle with God and say father I'm tired of being confident today I hear pastor's message and I'm jumping and at the face of every challenge I start asking questions that is a symptom of the absence of conviction when you have malaria, there are symptoms. When you have typhoid, there are symptoms. And a consultant can look at you and with digital precision, just looking at you and even without putting some, he just sees you and says, oh, I see the problem. You need an injection. You need these drugs. You need to rest. And you need this one. Take fruits. You've been eating too much of this. And like word of knowledge. Yes, sir. How do you know? You think he was playing for that 20 years? He started with theory, but he had to stand before a dead body then another dead body, then another dead body, then bodies that were alive. He stood so long until he became one with his knowledge. A theoretical God cannot give you the stamina for the days that are coming. Thank 
God for the God of Pastor Godwin. But he must become your God through experience. Thank God for the God of Joshua Selman. But he must become your God. I know whom I believe. That you can look at your child and say, Lord, I remember when I had an encounter, you told me that my womb would only produce kings and queens. This one that my child is already going to the police station at age 13. I invoke the blessings and the benefit of my knowledge with you. He said, present your cause. Bring forth your strong reasons. Don't sit down and keep lamenting sociologically. It does not solve that problem. When Isaiah in chapter 38 came to Hezekiah, we're wrapping up now, and he said, Hezekiah, you know me, I'm a seasoned prophet with integrity, put your house together, you are not going to survive. He said, thank you, I respect you, and I honor you as touching your office, be on your way. There are times that you need to close the door against genuine people and be alone. The Bible says Hezekiah turned his face to the world and said, Lord, remember, remember. There is something I know about you. Remember my love for you, your covenant with me. Huh. It was David that knew God through and through. I'm sure God wondered, what do I do with this man? When God wants to punish him, he will now begin to sing. He will sing his offense to God. And after singing his offense, you say, but I know you are a merciful God. Only the living can praise you. And God says, that's right. So, so if you kill me now, what benefit? What a negotiator. Negotiated his relevance and he remained there. Hallelujah. When you know God, you will know that your prayers with God are stored in vials. You will know that you're giving everything you do. There was something that the book of Esther revealed to us about the character of God. Mordecai helped the king but he was not rewarded. Many of us would have started lobbying Haman and say, Haman, help me and talk to the king. And Haman says, me that is planning to kill you. Okay, I've heard. And he will carry the book of remembrance and burn it. But Mordecai said, no. I know that every time you help a man and he forgets you, the justice of God will not leave him at peace. The Bible says that night could not King Ahasuerus sleep. He said, bring me the chronicles. And they opened it and found where Mordecai saved his life but was not rewarded. He said, who is in the chamber there? And his aides says, has anything been done to this man? He said, no. He said, who is there? And they brought Mordecai. What should be done to so, so, so and so man? To know that it was God that was behind that. He didn't mention the name of the man. So Haman said, who else? And he used his greed to suggest a lavish blessing. And he said, make sure none of this word fails. Do same to Mordecai. I'm prophesying to somebody here. In the name of Jesus, who is the son of the living God. The one who helps men to rise. Tonight, God is opening the book of remembrance concerning you. Hallelujah. Granting you access to superior dimensions. We do not rise by mistake. We do not rise by luck. The deeper you are with God, the higher you are to rise. Architecture has taught us that. When they're about to build a skyscraper, you don't just start laying the block on the ground. Sometimes they would dig deep the size of a, a, a normal flat. The same distance, it goes down. A tree that rises high will first go down, go down, go down. The Bible says he shall be like a tree that is planted by the streams of water. He does not wait for rainy or dry season. He's found a permanent source of supply. The Bible says, which yields his fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatsoever he doeth prospers. I came here to challenge you tonight. Pastor has already given us a very powerful foundation. As powerful as all you have heard me say is and are, it will not profit you until you are angry enough to say, I stop the excuses right now. I must go and cry. Some of you need to wake up in the night and play songs of worship and say, Lord, reveal yourself to me. Give me a token of your presence that becomes my confidence. Ask any great man in this church, your leaders here and every other person, they will tell you stories of their journeys and a point came where nothing physical looked like it and they had to resort back to the voice of God. When you see the other side of men's results, 
you will think they had guarantees from the start not even jesus had any guarantee <clears throat> jesus kept prophesying and speaking that i would die and resurrect at a point he himself wanted to negotiate father if it be possible i said no nevertheless was confident hear me man of god hear me businessman hear me gentleman young lady there is nobody that the lord cannot lift rather than sitting down admiring people and getting jealous and getting angry and wishing people bad to be a consolation to your current experience god is showing you a way out that there can be a superior way in the spirit Job said there is a path which no fowl has seen, that the whelps of the lion has not gotten there. Hallelujah. I traveled somewhere and back my, my home place and I saw people that I used to know many years ago. Nothing has changed about them. Same anger, same jealousy. The only thing is that they've become worse versions of themselves. Not knowing that it was in their destiny to become great but a deep experience with God please hear me anybody who makes you see God as a necessary luggage is a dangerous person run away from that person not at these end times anybody who makes you look like your time with God is a time of waste we live in a sharp sharp generation God I'm busy wait for me when I make money I can have a house with AC and then I'll, I'll find out what you are trying to tell me no accept the Lord builds the house i repeat except he watches over the city his treasure house is 12 years today as a testament that god has watched over his inheritance for this long can i tell you the truth god is the only guarantee we have every other thing we hold on to has historically and biblically been proven to fail men they will fail intelligence it will fail your energy it will deplete but they that wait upon the lord is that not in your bible that even the young men will fall the youth will utterly fall the young men will be weary but they that wait upon the lord he said has thou not seen has thou not heard the everlasting god the lord the creator of the ends of the earth that he is no not weary he does not get um, you know um, his strength does not deplete there is no searching of his understanding he says they that wait upon the lord that means the way we run is to wait every time you see a man waiting find out if he's upon the lord if he's waiting upon a man there might be trouble there if he's waiting upon his mind there might be trouble there but if he's waiting upon the lord i show you a man who has found the technology to access speed and greatness we waited to be here there are times some of you are still waiting for three four five years it looks like the last thing god told you is the last thing you have heard him stay let me lend my voice to the voice of your father to tell you wait it profits to wait upon the lord every time you wait upon the lord you are moving if you don't move god will move time to catch up with you but by all means there must be motion are we together you've heard me say if God designed for you to follow through this door and you believe that you heard him saying you should stay here and you stay with total faith and confidence so that you will not look like a liar, he will remove that door and put it here. You can move to the door or the door comes to you. The most important thing is there must be contact between you. This is the God that we serve. One prayer point and we're done tonight. Father, Grant me an encounter of yourself, an encounter of your ability. We live in times where we need to know God. We need to know God. Church, church, church thing will end up frustrating us. Believe me. Man of God, before you go and open a building and tell people, come, I know God will heal you. Make sure you know that God. Businessman, we live in a world that is full of wickedness. A habitation of cruelty. Someone pray. Let it be from the depth of your heart. But I know whom I have believed. And I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which is committed unto him against that day. 
the psalmist said i lay me down and i slept he said for the lord sustained me when you see men remain it is because the lord sustained them haven't obtained help from the lord he says i continue even unto this day just a few seconds in the spirit lord grant me grace to take my experience with you seriously grant me grace to love you above and beyond anything grant me grace to love and seek you more than money more than titles more than my mind more than the philosophies of men may i have an experience with you that supplies the staying power the grace to push through until i emerge victorious exploit is my heritage in christ but i obtain the requisite level of encounter for in jesus mighty name we pray let me lend my voice with pastor to encourage you by the grace of god the sessions that are coming please i want you to invite everyone that you find for some of you just hearing what you have heard now as you were listening the holy spirit began to speak to you that someone needs to hear this you can go to the, the church youtube page or on all, all of the, the pages where this was aired and make sure that you get it to someone and tell the person i found the key i found the the explanation to your vacillations in conviction you need to stay with god until you become immovable until you become unbendable ever abiding in the love of god hallelujah i decree and declare this is your season by the power that raised Christ from the dead that by this time next year you would return 10 times better in the name of Jesus Christ and every obstacle that has stood in the way sponsored by demonic powers that will not let you move I stand in the name of Jesus upon the existing grace in this house and I declare let that demonic embargo be cleared out of your destiny in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord himself grants you access to go forward. He told Moses, he said, prophesy to the people and tell them to go forward. Therefore, I speak to you, go forward. In the name of Jesus. But the people that do know their God, they shall be strong. You need to interpret life from the lens of your knowledge of God. Let me tell you, there are many lamentations that are unnecessary. They are not a proof of the absence of God's might. They are just a proof of your not knowing him properly. Are we together now? When you know a man who is kind and benevolent and he tells you, come to my office, your knowledge of what he's able to do will give you the same power. Even if you are seated there after 12 hours, he will come out and say, I'm so sorry, our attendees are no, no problem, sir. You are tired and complaining and yet you are no problem look look how people now please don't don't feel bad eh? i'm just saying this from a nice heart look how people queue in front of embassies right now all across nigeria and africa any embassy at all even one the ones that were quiet everybody's just queuing there why and they can endure that pain because they know the potential of a visa stamped in your passport there has to be something that sponsors your staying power our weakness is proof that we do not know something about god every time god demands that you are patient there is a compensation plan at the end of it if you know this about god you will laugh and rejoice even while you are standing in the midst of storms he says the lord is my light and my salvation of whom shall i be afraid of something about god you do not know 